We have called it off for the day. 75 knots in the gust. The difference between on the beach and behind the van. Oh my God, I think my eyes are bleeding. But we thought what we do is, um, Dirk might be going home, we're not sure. We might see him tomorrow, because it could be on. Um, but this is the van of the man, Dirk Diggler, or as he's known to his wife, <laughs> Dirk Doppenberg. Yes. <laughs> Just in case he thinks I don't know his proper name. Um, <laughs> Speed gear, you've got everything in here, but we're going to be talking about speed gear. What speed gear do you have? Uh, because people who don't know, Dirk is a regular on the GPS surfing, speed surfing, what do you call it, scene? It's obviously a website where everyone posts their GPS yes, results. Yes. Yeah, that's true. And in, uh, in the past, I did also uh, world championships and uh, we had in, also in England a nice event in 2008 driven by Wynn by Dave White. It was a really fun event and actually we are speed seekers you know it's in your blood and we do it for years I was out a couple of years because I was working a lot in the business as a sales manager for AV boards and 0.7 but now the last couple of years I went back and I get again the tight with this GPS thing and also for developing material uh, together with Andrea with GPS is really a reckon these days to do that and I mean, point seven going into it now. We obviously got Twan Versput, yeah. who is your what would you say? He's your he's your top speed rider. I he mean, he, top we, rider, you yeah. want him to break that world speed record? Yes. Yeah. We uh, Twan came with us uh, last year, in the end of the year, and uh, then he signed by a point seven and said, "Okay, the goal is to have the the world record speed in uh, Ludwig." And we made this speed sale. You saw also yesterday while Andrea was selling as well. And we develop it, we make protos, and I uh, sailed a lot with one in Holland because we have some good spots which looks a little bit like the channel, not that windy, but uh, you can test there a lot. And we were testing a lot and changing the sails, making prototypes. And now we have a sail that's really good for broad angles, what we use with a, with a big mast leaf, which you guys saw the last couple of days. And uh, now we waiting there for a day that it's really windy yeah, because now he did already 49.8 knots on the 500 yeah. meter average with a top speed of 52, 53. And, uh, but in actually light breeze eh? and he was sailing only 5.6 and not okay. the 5.0. And uh, so they need to have actually when they have this wind, what do we have here, <laughs> there, and then they beat the world record by 100 yeah. percent that, that's the thing uh for people who don't know luderitz at the moment in namibia there's a speed competition going on the luderitz speed challenge twan is there a few of the other top boys trying to get that record we're here in the south of france and it's windier here than it is there yeah it's unbelievable it's really howling and uh, yeah you have this multiple times a year you have this here and actually we are we're all daydreaming today why we don't dig a channel, yeah. a new channel with a good direction, with all the knowledge we know now, yeah, it will be wicked, but yeah, you need to have permits and it's not I so easy. I said the same thing to Vilma last night when I was driving away from here. I'm looking at the salt plains and I'm like, but what's the damage of digging a hole? Yeah, I, th I think for this small village, it gives them yeah. a lot of back. You know why there will people come? It will be easier for all speed guys not to have this huge cost to go to, to Namibia and uh, to make something of it. Eh? I know I was a couple of times in my life in West Kirby. I don't know if you yeah, know yeah, that yeah. in the UK. They have the little pound there and you yeah. go after and they do they sailing with dinghies in yeah. it. They sail with sailboats. It's a lot for the kids. It's the same here. Eh? Because when you don't use it on windy days, you can use it to teach people and don't go directly on the open yeah. sea. And I think for the camping places around it, it will give a lot of back and long term. But totally people are not thinking like this, I think. Maybe it's coming over the year. Maybe this helps a little bit and people open their eyes. But uh, yeah, speed sailing is, is, is nice, you know, and I think uh, everybody love it. And these days with the GPS and everything, it's really fine yeah. uh, to do. So what boards have you got? Like, what's your top speed anyway? What's your GPS top speed? Max. I always go on max because I'm just a normal person. And when I, I just look for the biggest number. Now I know in the GPS circles, that's not the cool thing to do. The cool thing to do is uh, uh, 10 seconds. You need five, 10 seconds to get a record or something. Is yeah. that right? You know what I do? I take my dashboard on the GPS website because I don't have it 
totally on the number in my head. It's okay. Because sometimes I say something, people say, oh, it's not true, so we can check this out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Better to be accurate. The speed guys are very... Comes down to like, point this, point so, that. So, dashboard, my dashboard. I mean, it's an interesting thing, actually. We've got to say, the speed, the, the GPS speed saving site, you have to have a certain watch. There's only certain GPS watches and devices that will count for a record. You can upload the different ones, but if you want to actually get a record, I think you have to have two that are, uh, that are compliant with all the little Doppler and the, all the other stuff. When you go on the site, you will know, um, and then you can get a record, and then they ratify, ratify it and check all the, all the is that right? Yeah. Check all the, yeah. the data yeah. Yeah. against each other. So it's not just as simple as, oh, I got a really fast GPS, I went 52, and you get the record. It's not that simple. These boys are proper techers. Here we go. So, max two seconds. Two seconds, 49.12. 49.12, so I'm faster than you, is that right? Yeah, you're faster than me, but you were selling on the channel. I did go to Luderitz. It's a cheating. Basically, Luderitz is the fastest place in the world. No joke, no no things about it. But that speed, where was that? In Holland? Yeah, this was in Holland. That's quick. And That's um, quick. I had a 250, the 47.36, where it was the second in the last year, last period from the Dunkerbeck Challenge. Okay. And um, but the 500 still 4456, and this is in England. It's impressive. Right? Yeah, this That's was during this event uh, driven by wind. So look, the the one seconds and the ten seconds you can go much higher, but you see already how much the conditions need to be yes. to do a really good 500 meter. It's hard. It's yeah. hard. Like 500 meters, which is how the world record is set. So the official, you know, water speed record for sailing crafts, which Antoine Albo holds for windsurfing at the moment has to be done with the time in poles yeah. and the official guy from World Speed Sailing or yes. World Sailing. World Sailing. World yes. Sailing. So if you haven't got those details, you can't set a record. So you can only do it at specific events. With the GPS stuff, you can rock up to La Palm here yeah. <laughs> on a day like this, go out there and you can set a GPS record if you've got two. Yes. Two. Uh, yeah. yeah, you see here that you, I have the two best sessions I ever did in Holland, yeah. and the third one was South End on Sea. This was in England. South End. South End. When it works, it's re it's really. But you need to walk far. Yeah. And uh, but it's a nice spot there eh, because when it works, very good, and also for the nautical miles, a dream there to do. Yeah. And it's a really nice spot, and I think in Europe have a lot of this kind of spots, and uh, yeah. People like me, they're hunting for this kind of spots, the same like here in uh, in La Palme. So for people just getting into speed, let's going to say a few people watching, what do you advise? Because you've obviously got some small boards here. Yeah. What's the sort of big speed board? What's a small speed board? Give give maybe a little run through. I take here out the speed board, the 52 white. So this is the most used board. This is actually my light, light wind speed board. So what say sail size you use this with? I use this with from, uh, you can use it for 7.8, but I use it from 7.1 till 5.6. Okay. And I use it when the, the, the wind is like uh, medium wind till maximum uh, 30, 25 to 30 knots. And this is the board for what everybody can sail because this board is easy to start because it has a little bit more volume. Just for most of the people, this so board's how much, really easy. How much volume? So 78, Se 78. So 78 liters. When they talk in speed boards, always talk in width. So 52 wide at the widest point. Uh, and fins. A lot of talk in speed sailing about asymmetrical fins. Has this got an asymmetrical yes. or would you use this Asy with a... There's an asymmetrical fin. And this is a 24 centimeter. And fr yesterday you make the movie of the young kid Federico, the Italian. Yeah. He he used my board, and he using the 24. Uh, and this time the good one, the yeah. Starboard Tech fin. So when we talk about asymmetric, basically one way has more of a foil, and the other way has got the opposite of a foil. So going this is a starboard tack asymmetrical fin yes so that means when you're going on starboard tack your right hands at the front it has a lot more grip it basically you can go smaller with the fin yeah and it will provide as much hold yeah i think uh, when i use in this board a normal fin it's 28 or 29 yeah. and now i use 24 yeah, so you go because, smaller yeah much more power and you can see here it is one side it is round and the other side is right so when you look here in the box this is 
much narrower than the other side. Yeah. And then you see there's an asymmetrical fin. So we did have an issue yesterday where one of the guys was using the opposite fin and he was trying to go fast on starboard with a port tack fin. That is scary, isn't it? That's yeah. not what you should do. <laughs> no, actually, uh, last night I uh, I still dream about it because actually it was also my mistake because I was the one that put the fin in. And again, <laughs> I'm really sorry that this happened because we were all a little bit stressed to go out and I didn't watch carefully what I put in. <laughs> and this was this board that Andre I was using yesterday. And this is the 45. So 45 wide. 45 wide with 63 uh, liters. liters inside. And this is, for me, my board where they use the most. Okay. And this I sell with 62, 5, 6 and 5, 0. And I can use it up to 25 knots. Okay. So, because you need to have a little bit of wind, you need to be powered up on the sail to go away. Because you always need to start broad, that you have a little bit speed or jump. Ju uh, running two steps in the water and jump yeah. on it to have the the going because yeah. else you it's only 63 liters you can't just yeah. stand on that thing and and then pump to get going it'll just sink so you have to be able to master this sort of jump start isn't it like yeah. a push start yeah yeah correct and here we use the, for this size we always use the asymmetrical 21 and you see now also it's the port tech fin inside yeah Yeah, interesting. So is that that you haven't got a smaller one than that? No, we have also a 40, but actually they use this kind of boards more on the channel. Yeah. And uh, very specific, isn't it? A yeah. 40. Yeah. And uh, but even on days like this with a little bit less wind and it is flat, you can use it. But the problem is to go back and uh, because to go up wind and to start on the 40 is really hard. Yeah. So there we go. That's your little uh, intro to speed sailing. Will we get on the water tomorrow? Well, I don't know. Sail size at the moment. I mean, we've got gusts of 75 knots. It's literally unsailable. Tomorrow, what sort of size sail we're hoping for? 5.0? Yeah. What's the ultimate speed sail? As small as you can go, or can you go too small? You can go too small. It depends on the course. It depends how broad you are sailing. And um, this is the, 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 the thing also, uh, the thing is how heavy you are, um, how is the course, do I need to sail upwind? Because it can be nice that you have everything focused on the downwind, but you need to come also back. Yeah. And norm, when you normally say you have, don't have a car on the beach and go back like yeah. they have on the channel. So you need to have a comparison of what is good. Uh, for me, I really love my 5.6. Yeah. Uh, why? Because the five six in general, you can you have a little bit more power. You can come more up when you go down. Sometimes you are stacked on your five zero, and then you are in the good position, 120, 130 degrees to go downwind. And then you think, hey, I want to have more wind. Yeah. And this is a little bit the game you play. And for everybody, it's different. Yeah, yeah. But at a home, I like mostly the on the five six because you can sail in general, good back and go good downwind. How heavy are you? At the moment, 94 kilos. Okay, and I see you got a weight jacket there because, again, from my experience on the channel, this was a big game changer. Just a little bit of weight made quite a big difference. Surprising. Yeah, the the thing what the, uh, when you have a little bit more weight in your back and you get the gust in the wind, you have much more control over the rig, yeah. and you feel that normally when you have no weight and you get really gust, you go every time like yeah. this. And it hurts actually also your arms. And with the extra weight on the body, you don't have that anymore. Yeah. And it's a little bit easy. But also don't underestimate it how dangerous it can be. Huh? Because look, you are in an open ocean. When you need to swim back and you have five kilos extra lead, it's not easy. Huh? So you always need to reckon when this happened, take the thing off and drop it. Yeah, yeah? because yeah, don't get attached to your weight jacket. No, you don't, know. don't get attached. Then the other thing, everybody has an own system to do it. What I did, I bought actually, you can buy like little lead perils, yeah, small yeah. ones. And I uh, saw it in, an, uh, in, a, in a carton bag with some foam in it. And then I make packages because... Oh, don't take these on the airplane. That's yeah. a bit dodgy. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> th this has... 
this one is for in the front. You can put it in the in the jacket. Okay. And this one is two and a half kilos. And in the back side, I have a little bit bigger pockets, and there are also bigger stash in the back side. Okay. That jacket looks dodgy, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how heavy are those? This is three kilos. Yeah. And now I have two inside. And I love to have a little bit on the back and a little bit in the front. And now this is around eight kilos. And then you sail from uh, Morocco to Tarifa. <laughs> yeah. This is like and then you paid for the year sailing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, yesterday I had only one bag with me. It's only three kilos that's extra. Heavy. Yeah, this is heavy. But when I am on, when you are sailing on spots where it's not so dangerous like here, you can put a little bit more. Okay. But uh, it you. The important thing is you need to be comfortable when it's when you have trouble to walking. Hey, please don't do it. Eh? And you need to learn it also to sail with weight. Yeah. You need to start first with two kilos and then you can change it a little bit more. Yeah. And there are also people who say I don't like it and they yeah. don't use it. And it's like you say, safety first as well. You've got to remember if you've got weight on you, you need some buoyancy as well because if you have a crash, knock yourself out, and you're you can sink. Yeah, <laughs> it's really, as simple as that. Really. You can sink. So it's not something to play around with. Um, you need to make sure people have got an eye on you and all that stuff is happening. And you have got some buoyancy in your jacket. And what um, we do also, sometimes you put an extra fin inside. Okay. So then for another size or another type of fin that you can change on the water. You don't need to go back yeah. to the fin. And, this and your sandwiches or no, Yeah, you can have your gel drinks <laughs> and this kind of things also inside. So this is a little bit thing. For the rest, actually nothing special. We use all production gear. I have a question. Harness, what do you use, seat or waist? I am using actually, uh, when it's flat water like this, oh. I'm using the seat harness. Seat harness, okay. Yeah, because this, uh, this is a seat harness where you can adjust the height of the, of the hook. So this one is even able to do the hook. Uh, higher okay but uh, on the body it's for me much nicer to sit yeah. and when you are going downwind and you are 120 degrees and you get this big big gas coming in I have much more power to the board when I can yeah. sit in the harness yeah. uh, I use also a lot of times the the waist harness but the last couple of months I, I grabbing also in the defy wind I did one race with a uh, with a uh, normal harness and then I took the seat harness yeah. and but when it's onshore and you go really into the wave or side shore that you jump over the wave then I go directly back. So you got more legs? Yeah more, more, more legs than, free yeah. and then I do mostly the trick to put it a little bit lower. Yeah yeah uh, that trick is definitely oh, we've seen that in other videos where you basically push uh, Andrea Cookie actually 0.7 boss was showing me, I've seen it before, but I never really tried it properly, pushes the harness, waistline is right down on the hips. For me, that feels like my go-to thing now. Yeah, I really because like your, it. your lower back is more free. Yeah, but you still got the legs of, yes. a, of a waist harness. So people who keep saying to me, no, but just use a seat harness. It's not the same feeling. No. It's a, it really is a, 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 in between. I know there's a couple of people out there that make these weird harnesses that cup the buttocks and, yeah. <laughs> and they actually look interesting yeah. as well. But for me, it's actually, it's quite easily because offshore winds, side offshore winds, I always take the seat. Yeah. When it's onshore and you really go against the wave and the wave's not going from cross off, yeah. I use the... You want to use legs. Yeah, Harness legs. line length, just one more thing. Yeah, for slalom normally I use 30 to 36, but for speed sailing I use much shorter. Really? Yeah. Okay. For speed sailing I have now uh, 22 to 26 on the on the boom. Okay. Uh, why? Because actually when you go downwind your stance is totally different and when you really hit the gas you want to be above the kit more and when the gas come you want to be close by the rig but stretch your forearm to get this extra ex extra acceleration. When you have this, the seal to fall back this goes like yeah. too much that and it's not locked yeah yeah and you saw yesterday also very nice in your movie you saw Finny coming by also shorter harness lines yeah. and you saw him really locked down and then you saw the Italian kid coming like this because yeah. his harness lines was like 30 centimeters I told him take please my boom with the shorter harness and no yeah. no I need the long ones but yeah on speed sailing you definitely need shorter harness lines so right one last thing before we go um, 
tips for going fast? This is more for me. <laughs> no, but is there anything you do? Because again, when I was on the channel, I feel like I'm losing, like I'll get a gust. I mean, weight was a massive thing for me. As soon as I put the weight jacket on, those gusts that pick you up, you can, you don't get picked up as much. So you, when you actually get the gust, you accelerate. Is there anything you do specifically? You were just saying then about your arm, or is it, is it not conscious? You just you no. Just do I, it? I think uh, look, there is when when you are heading up uh, like to go for a run, and you are in the downwind position, and you get on gust. What the gust is doing is lifting you up. Yeah. And then there is one thing what I always try to do and what I feel then also the acceleration is to go with the gust. It sounds weird, but when the gust hits you and you go against it, the board's going like this because yeah. you're hanging down. So what I do, you have with the short harness line, the, the sail locked and you feel the gust going. So I give it to the gust. Okay, nice. So I make my front arm longer yeah. and I go directly with the gust because yeah. the gust is going that direction and I go with the gust. When yeah. I go with the gust, I totally take the full speed and energy of this wind. Yeah, when I want to uh, lean back because I feel power, then you are fighting the wind. Yeah. So you need to let it go. Yeah. yeah, but the thing is in the mindset, you have the feeling I go for the catapult, yeah. but you don't go because this cost is always lifting you. So when you go in forward, you actually level the board more flat and you go with the gust for the acceleration. Yeah. This is, I think, what I do and what the tip is to let it go. And that's why to standing comfortable on your kit, this is first. And then when you get the gust, you need to try to let it go and not open the arm, just close the back arm, but let it go. And then when you go with the gust, you feel directly the acceleration. And then you saw ye yesterday also when some people slingshotting, like Finney example, he, he goes full downwind and then he slingshot and he, the only thing what he does, he opens his arm and he yeah. goes directly with the gust. Yeah. Because you slingshot actually with the gust. And this is also the place where I sail a lot. This is a small lake, it's flat, like a pancake. It's in the middle of Holland, it's close to my house. And there you have an open course because you can decide how the course is. Yeah. But actually, the fastest guy, they go fast and when you look, they always go the same direction as the gust. Yeah. So they're going on speed like 50, 60 km, yeah. then the gust coming over and then they yeah. attack the gust and they slingshot in the gust. So and when you do open arm, I think this is the yeah. trick. That makes, it makes a lot of sense. Like you say, the slingshot for anyone who doesn't know, is basically what you just said when you go with the gust you, yeah. you're coming in you get up to your speed and when you think you've kind of reached your most then you do that extra bit of downwind at the end and that's that max speed you get and it just boosts up your your overall speed yeah it boosts up your overall speed but the mental thing on this game is because when the gust hits you you feel a lot of more power and you think i need to hold it yeah but because when you let it go and you let your front arm go yeah. the sail goes much forward and it's open and it takes the gust. Yeah. But in your head you think you go for over, yeah. but you don't go because to the gust, the board lifting up. So actually you're leveling more the board. Yeah. There we go. 50 knots tomorrow, people. 50 knots tomorrow. <laughs>